Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with a tag video. I was tagged a few weeks back by the lovely Brie over at Falling for Books. I will leave a link to her blog in the description box below. And this is the Get to Know the Romance Reader tag. And I thought this was so much fun and thank you so so much Brie for tagging me in this. I, I love the questions and I'm very very much looking forward to it. So there are 10 questions here so let's jump right in and get started. The first one is, what is your romance origin story? And how did you come to read your or how did you come to read your first romance novel? So I've talked about this before on my channel, but I will mention it again if any of you are new, that I came to romance through my aunt, which I think is the way a lot of us did, um, you know, through our grandmothers or our mothers or our aunts or even an older cousin. Um, that my aunt used to be the um, head of payroll for the Toronto Public Library um, back when before she retired and um, she used to get books all the time especially the the uh, category romance harlequins um, you know they would because there are so many that come out every month they can only keep so many at the library and a lot of them if they were in poor condition would end up getting tossed like thrown out sadly and I mean this is this was many many years ago I don't know if that practice has changed but um, Anyway, she would bring home them by the bagful, and her and my grandmother would gobble them up. And I remember being at the cottage. Uh, my grandparents had a cottage up in Peterborough when I was growing up, and my aunt would bring these books up, and her and grandma, like I said, would read through them. And I remember looking at them, and they were the the uh, the very typical the presents covers, um, you know, with the circle with the picture of the people, and it was always like, you know. Um, uh, you know, oh, like the a virgin for the prince, or you know, his innocent seduction, and I'm sure those are actual titles at some point. <laughs> but they they always made me roll my eyes, and I'm like, I'm not reading that that stuff. And you know, then one day I was actually going up to the cottage. I was a bit older. I was in my early twenties, and I was heading up to the cottage for a week for a week vacation. And I had stopped at like a grocery store or Walmart or you know some sort something like that. And I was perusing the books because silly me as a reader did not have a book to bring with me. So I happened upon a Harlequin duets novel um, called um, Heaven Sent and Shotgun Nanny um, by Jacqueline Diamond and I cannot remember the other author's name. It was, it was, it's two books in one. And I picked it up on a whim because the cover was like cartoony and stuff like that. I'll, I'll have a picture of it up here. I have an actual copy of the book but it's, it's on my other bookshelf. And um, I picked it up and I think I devoured it in about two days. And then the next, like the next day I went back, um, I went into town, um, excuse me, from the cottage. And I went to a used bookstore and picked up a stack of Harlequins because I didn't realize that this is also what Harlequin was. In my mind, it was always the presents novels. And not that there's a problem with those ones, they're just not my favorites. And from there I got into the intrigue and the American romance and the super romance. And that's where I fell in love with romance. And then I started reading authors like Susan Wiggs and Susan Mallory and Cheryl Woods and Jill Shalvis and you know the list goes on and on and on and but yeah that's my origin story um, and even after I fell in love with romance then my aunt started bringing me bags of books from the library um, that I could then you know devour and pass on to somebody else so it was super fantastic um, question number two is if you could be the heroine in a romance novel who would be the author and what what's one trope you'd insist be in the story I love this question so much I would want Kristen Higgins to write it um, you know if I was gonna star in a in a romance novel I would want the amazing Kristen Higgins to write it she is still hands down my favorite her characters are so relatable they could be the person that you know your neighbor or your friend or a co-worker um, her stories are hysterically funny and yeah, I, I absolutely love her work. And as for trope, friends to lovers? I always do like a good friends to lovers. And you know, if she was writing my romance with my husband, it would definitely be that. <laughs> or, or like the online dating to, to, to marriage kind of an idea. So yeah, that would definitely be, uh, be my pick, would be the amazing Kristen Higgins. Um, question number three is, um, what's what is a romance that you've read this year that you want more people to read excuse me just a minute I happen to have a copy of it right here I know everybody everybody on booktube and on bookstagram oops, I thought something knocked over has already read this but if you have not if you're living under a rock the unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren five-star read this could hands down be my favorite book of the year I absolutely loved it this was an enemies to lovers story takes place the bulk of it in Hawaii it's got great humor great characters highly highly recommend 
everybody needs to read this book. Um, question number four. What is your favorite romance subgenre? What subgenre have you not read much from? So my favorite is contemporary. I love me a good contemporary. Coming in a very close second is historical. Um, but definitely I'm a contemporary addict. I, I, they just, they are my absolute favorite. The one I don't read a lot from is paranormal romance. You guys, if you watch my channel, you know this. I am not big into it except for the Crew of Hunters series by Heather Graham. I'm just not a huge fan of vampires and werewolves and things like that. I, I like my romance grounded just a, a little bit more in reality. Um, <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Who is one of your autobi authors? I can only pick one. Well, this is a sad question. I can't pick just one. It's like picking your favorite child or your favorite cat. No, I can't pick one. Kristen Higgins, Julia Quinn, Susan Mallory, Cheryl Woods, Heather Graham. Um, there's a ton of them. There's an absolute ton. Sarah Morgan. Oh my gosh, how could I forget the amazing, amazing Sarah Morgan? You know, like I have a list a mile long of autobi authors. And yeah, like I, I see they have new books come out. Jill Shalvis. And as soon as I see a new book by them, I it gets pre-ordered or put on a list or it ends up in my possession somehow. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, question number six. How do you typically find romance recommendations? Um, YouTube. I love, I love YouTube. This is I, truth, truth telling right now, you guys. I don't watch television. I don't watch movies. I am working my way through CSI um, on uh, CBS All Access. And then when I'm done the original CSI, I do plan on uh, watching uh, CSI New York. But I watch YouTube. And I am perfectly content with only watching YouTube. It would not bother me in the least. Um, and Instagram. Um, I'm all over Instagram. I follow a ton of different people and I get so many recommendations. I can't tell you the number of times that I'll be sitting like, you know, at my desk taking five minute, taking a five minute mental break and I'll be scrolling through Instagram and I'll hit across a book and I'll just do the uh, capture, like take a picture of the screen. And then when I get home at night, I'm looking through <laughs> like all the books that I've screen captured. Um, yeah, those are my two biggies are YouTube and Instagram for sure. Um, What's an upcoming romance uh, romance release that you're excited for? Um, a Wedding in December by, by the amazing Sarah Morgan. Um, this is her new book that is coming out at the end of, I want to say it's the end of September, but I'm actually holding off until the end of October when it's released in the UK because I follow Sarah Morgan, Sarah Morgan on Instagram and I've seen the UK cover. And I actually might even buy both, the American and the UK covers because they are both spectacular but it's a Christmas novel. It is about an older couple who is going through a divorce and whose daughter is getting married. And yes, please, I am all over that so much. <laughs> um, number eight, what is one misconception about romance you would like to lay to rest? These are not necessarily fluffy books, necessarily. I'm not saying they are not at all. Yes, there are some great books that are just you come home after a long day and you can pick up this book and it's not, it's light, it's fluffy, it's fun, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what I think I really want people to understand is that's not a bad thing. We live in a society now where you are inundated with news stories and stuff and, and, and none of it's good, you guys. You know, like I listen to the news in the morning in the car on my way to work. There is generally not one good story in there. It's always someone's been murdered or somebody's been kidnapped or somebody's done something. And it's depressing. And you know, what's what's the harm in reading stuff that makes you happy? You know, this is a hobby. You know, the amount of adults who do not read is staggering. And those of us who do, why, why put that down? You know, um, romance is not, you know, and, and as I started to say, yes, you can get into the escapism books, those fun books. But every now and then, and, and you know, I, I find the more and more I read, the more and more I'm running into stories where there is some sort of a poignant issue that is being addressed within that book, whether it be spousal abuse or in the case of right now, I'm reading Temptation Ridge by Robin Carr, and they um, are dealing with a gentleman who has, um, oh, what does he have? Oh, he's got some sort of a, a condition and he's living in a group home and this group home has been beating him. Like, Really? I mean, that's a poignant issue, you know what I mean? And it's being addressed in a 
fluffy, to some people, romance novel. Um, you know, that this stuff comes up all the time. And, you know, I think that needs to be acknowledged more. That you don't necessarily always have to read, you know, these, uh, you know, literary fiction novels um, and stuff like that. And those are great too, don't get me wrong. Historical fiction is fantastic too. But you can just sit down and enjoy and enjoy what you want to read, whatever it is. If you want to reread Harry Potter for the eighth time, good for you. And I hope that you enjoy it. If you want to sit down with a Julia Quinn or a Kristen Higgins and lose yourself from the real world for an hour, then that's great because we all need that mental break and I think we all deserve it. Um, sorry for that little soapbox right there, you guys. Um, number nine. Who is the most recent romance reading content creator that you've come across that you'd like to shout out? I can't think of anybody, guys. I'm going to take a pass on this one. I know that's horrible of me, but I follow like a number of people on YouTube. If anyone, if any of you watching this have any romance YouTuber recommendations, please post them in the comments below because I need more. I, I, I want all the romance. Um, and, and even I watch tons of YouTubers who don't even talk about romance just because I love watching their content, because I love them as people, you know what I mean? But I'm always on the lookout for more romance people. Um, <clears throat> and I'm glad that we are becoming a thing now on YouTube, and I think that's fantastic. Um, the other is Instagram. I am all over Instagram, as I said. I follow a ton of people on Instagram. If you search the hashtag um, Romancegram, I'll leave the spelling of it below. Um, check that out. You can find a ton, a ton of different romance um romance bookstagrammers to follow and they do some amazing stuff. I am on Instagram myself. Please feel free to follow me. My link is below. My pictures are nowhere near as pretty as some people's, but I do my best. Um, mine's real life. That's the thing is that I don't decorate it up to make it all look pretty. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> this is my life. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, that's, that's, I'm actually more asking you guys for recommendations because that would be fantastic. I would love to do, I'll have to do in the near future, um, maybe a shout out to like a whole bunch of people that I follow on both YouTube and Instagram just to kind of give a nice shout out. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, question number 10. If someone had never read a romance before and asked you to recommend the first three romances that come to mind as a place to start, what would those recommendations be? That's difficult to do, in my opinion because you do not know what people are going to like. If you are a romance, you know, if, if you come to me and say, I read this romance, can you recommend something along those lines? Yes, I can. That would be a fun video too, wouldn't it, you guys? What do you guys think that you guys could come to me and say, I've read this, recommend something similar? Ooh, that would be fun. I'll have to keep that in mind for later. Let me know in the comments below if you guys like that idea. Anyway, sorry, side note. Um, but it all depends on what the person reads, right? So I've got three here that I want to recommend. Um, just because I think, and it's one from kind of each of the main genres in romance. So the first one, of course, I'm going to be starting off with is already aforementioned Heather Graham. If you are into like more suspenseful mystery thrillers, definitely check out Heather Graham. This is The Dead Room, which I believe is part of a series. <laughs> I, I know, actually, I think this might be a standalone. I'm pretty sure this might actually be a standalone. Um, but she, um, if you like paranormal, she does great paranormal. This, I think, is zelging more on the paranormal as well. Um, but romantic suspense, that kind of suspenseful mystery thriller, if that's what you're into, try a Heather Graham. Um, if you are into historical and you like historical fiction and things like that, I do have to recommend Julia Quinn. Even though she's much more on the lighter side, if you typically just read historical fiction and you, you know, want to try a romance, that one's a little bit difficult to do because a lot of the historical romance novels tend to have this lightness and this great humor to them. The queen of it, in my opinion, um, is Julia Quinn with the Bridgerton series. Definitely check out The Duke and I. Hands down, one of my favorite books of all time. I am super stoked about the Netflix series coming in the new year cannot wait to read it. Um, and last but not least, my, my baby, my contemporaries. I'm going to talk about one of the first books I, I read by this author. And this is a lesser known work by her, in my opinion, but hands down is still probably one of her best. And that is Just Brief by Susan Wiggs. This book is unbelievable. I have passed this book on to coworkers, to friends, and everyone who has read it has absolutely loved it. So this is the story about a woman who is actually a cartoonist. That's what she does for her job is she does a, a women's 
kind of a cartoon. And throughout the book, you actually get little cartoon panels. Is that not awesome? So in the beginning of the book, she finds her husband is cheating on her when she catches him in the act. So she immediately leaves him and heads home to the small town that she grew up in, a beach town, if you can't tell by the cover, and goes back to stay with her elderly aunts, who are fantastic. Um, and she runs into her old high school boyfriend. And the story goes from there, and I don't want to give any more than that away. This was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. Please, please do yourself a favor and pick this up. I found this one by chance at a thrift store in hardcover, and I was so thrilled. This was originally published in 2008. So this is this book is 11 years old. But like I said, it was one of the first by Susan Wiggs I ever re read. And it's still hands down one of my absolute favorite books of all time. Um, you cannot, please just read this one if you haven't read it yet. So anyway, guys, that is all that I have for this tag. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you again to the lovely Brie for tagging me in this. Yay, this was so much fun. I just love talking romance and that's why I'm here. Um, and anyway, guys, until my next video, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, guys.